And now, almost live from the beautiful city of Culver in Southern California, from posture to positive mental attitude, grab your bran muffins. It's the Susan Statner Show. There is a growing concern among the children of the planet regarding the increasing number of big people who are alcoholics, drug addicts, smokers, abusers, molesters, overeaters, and gangsters. The kids convened in Geneva last month to discuss the situation. They came to the conclusion that the problem was mainly due to the fact that most parents have their heads up their butts. So they elected a representative to speak to the adults of the world in hopes of preventing further parenting faux pas. And these are their words. Thank you very much. Did I do good? I'd like to thank you for your time. No one knows better than we kids how busy you are, you the, the tall ones, the big people. You know, most kids my age, unless we're on a sitcom, we're not generally known for being articulate. But that doesn't mean that we don't have something to say. We all got together last week at the World Conference in Geneva where several breakthroughs were made. I'd like to share with you the revelations of that summit. First, we realize that because we don't know so many words, many of you think we're stupid. Gosh, just because we can't accurately describe what we're feeling and observing doesn't mean our feelings aren't valid. I don't believe that I've ever experienced a feeling without a legitimate cause. Take being scared, for example. I'm very short. I can't drive. I'm broke. I'm not trained to do anything except go potty. I can't even order pizza, make a cup of coffee, or apply for a gold card. I am 100% dependent on other people for my survival. How would you feel if that were you? Wouldn't it freak you out to be at the mercy of a couple of people who appear to be one crate short of a full load? And what if you knew that if you didn't act the way your inconsistent caretakers demanded, you'd get punished or abandoned? It's not a situation that creates a sense of calm. There was a common misconception addressed at the summit that we the children need to clear up. Contrary to what we've been told mommies, daddies, the spankings that you give us don't hurt you more than they hurt us. You get over it. We, on the other hand, live with the humiliation, the fear, the confusion. After all, you, you claim to love us and you want to scare the hell out of us? What's that about? You know, history tells us that Adolf Hitler was hit and heavily disciplined when he was little. He still became a very bad boy. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with a rod, he shall not die. Well, part of him does die. Do you have any idea how large you look to us? Ah! We just got here. We're human sponges soaking in everything we're exposed to in order to acquire essential information about Earth as quickly as possible so that we can grow up, get a driver's license, and move away from you. Sorry. But we have been genetically programmed to say, thanks for life. Bye. Our infantile goal is to learn how to cope and survive on our own as to not remain totally dependent on the sound judgment and cooperation of others, as others often don't cooperate. We learn fast and we learn forever. And some of the stuff that we learn prohibits and stunts our growth. We may never feel safe in just being ourselves, as being ourselves often hurts. Oof. Mm, bitch. Mm -hmm. For example, when we're being our rambunctious, noisy little selves and we get whacked or reprimanded, we may not just learn to respect the airspace of others, we may also become conditioned to be quiet, really quiet. Someone steps on us and we may not feel entitled to go ouch. Shyness, an unnatural, socially induced state causes us later in life to pass up on opportunities like dating and exciting careers that require self-esteem and an intense going after it determination. I'm getting over my shyness. 
If we were shown how to relate in a cold, resentful, blaming, angry, punishing, and withholding way, how are we supposed to have healthy, intimate, authentic, passionate relationships? You know, in school they teach us how to spell words and where to put them in sentences, but how to use the words to help get us what we want is left up to luck. We learn how to communicate by watching the big people. What did the big people in your house say? Did they listen, support, validate, show interest, accept unconditionally? Look at the relationship that you're in now or the one you just left. That'll tell you. You're looking at late night TV infomercials. The wife drags you into the self-help section at Crown Books. You're passing the magazine box on the corner with the learning annex leaflets that encourage you to change, but to accept yourself the way you are. Confusing, I know. Why are so many people trying to better their lives? Is happiness so elusive that we have to read up? Yes. If your parents, the people who were supposed to show you how to be people, weren't happy people, where are you supposed to learn it from? TV? No, because TV will tell you that normal is the Nelsons or the Petries, or for you farmers watching, the Clampets. Remember when $60 million was a lot of money? Do you remember when TV characters were fighting about money from week to week? And how about that episode where Rob was complaining that Laura wasn't giving him enough sex? Or, or, or when Jed was trying to get Ellie Mae to break up with her heroin addict boyfriend with a nose ring? No, maybe I made up those episodes. <laughs> but the point is that we learn by example. What did your role models teach you? Did they teach you how to be happy? Or did they have miserable, boring lives and they just hoped that you were spared the same fate? If we could just sit you down, we'd like to say, Mom, Daddy, I know that you never deliberately intended to condition me to fear that you just want to prevent future criminal activities. Look, there is no way that you can possibly anticipate my every need I, as a child, am a never-ending assignment of demands and requirements and hungers. A lot of really retarded stuff comes out of my mouth. I know you don't always have the time or the patience, but I have a need to share my experience and connect with you. Kids are into bonding, and we're very forgiving. Do you know that it takes years of rejection and humiliation and disappointment before we actually give up trying to get your love? We, the children, believe that if parents help to build up self-esteem and allow children to retain their dignity as complete, although short, human beings, then we are more likely to behave in moral and upstanding ways. If you parents are clever rather than punitive, you will have more long-term success with us. If you're a mature, honest, playful parent who can raise and lower yourself to our level, you'll foster a mighty connection with your little ones that mere brute force and total domination could never yield. Hitting teaches us, well, in order to get what you want, use aggression. We learn that if this is what authority is, I'm afraid of it, or <laughs> give me some. You know, one day, <laughs> you're going to be a senior, gumming your yams, watching reruns of Murder, she wrote, and hoping for a satisfying potty movement, and I'll be the one in charge. <laughs> Watching. You know, if you find yourself going nuts because your seven-year-old won't comply like a Marine, then perhaps you need to find a therapist who can help you discover why you fly into a rage when a seven-year-old acts like a seven-year-old. Kids are messy whiners. When you decided to start a family, what did you expect would be growing up in your house, Cary Grant? My false eyelashes are coming off because my right eye is tearing because I have allergies. And I used a nasal spray that they they have commercials on TV for and it didn't work. We, the committee, know that being a parent is hard. We see how our whining annoys you, but we whine less if we feel like you're listening and that you care about our stupid retardo spazzy stuff. My logic's often skewed. I realize I babble. And I know that you'd prefer that I just, you know, go to my room or shut up and behave like a good girl. 
I'm so much more than just a daughter. I am an artist, an explorer, a biologist, a singer, and a dancer. And yes, you're right, I am a comedian. I need to express myself. I'm also a historian who's keeping a record of everything you do to and around me. And we, we the defenseless ones, we urge you, you who've signed on for the job of parent, to be creative while interfacing with us. We want you to come up with something more inventive than just yelling and inflicting physical pain. Any idiot could do that. We at the Geneva Convention came up with some guidelines from now on. The givers of life on whom we depend must implement non-abusive discipline techniques like grounding, removal of TV rights, writing assignments, and formal frank discussion that will teach us how to use our heads. Name calling like you bad girl or you bad boy is prohibited by the Geneva Convention. You will now address my actions, not my character. See, if you call me a bad girl when I behave in a way that displeases or frightens you, I may start believing that I am a bad girl. And then I might really act like one. If you mean that you don't like my behavior, then say so. But please, I'd like to be able to break a lamp without a character assassination, okay? Don't you think I feel bad enough about the broken lamp? Obviously not. I mean, can't a gal pull some tulips out of a flower bed without you reacting like she'd invested poorly and lost the family home? It was a tulip. You raising flowers or children? If you don't stop crying, I'll give you something to cry about. You know, when you tell me if I don't stop crying, you're going to give me something to cry about, you invalidate my feelings. See, if I'm crying, it's because I'm overwhelmed and conflicted. I feel like scum. So I come to you hoping that you can help me feel better. I want a little attention, a, a hug, a reassuring word. Instead, I get threatened. I do have something to cry about, okay? I don't need you to give me more. I often feel like a naive and confused, vertically challenged immigrant. My feelings may seem asinine to you, so you rudely dismiss them. But you know what that tells me? It tells me that I don't deserve your time or respect. I guess I'm less important to you than your newspaper. Look, I really value your opinions. You, you parents, gosh, you're like geniuses. You know how to drive and, and push buttons for cooking and phone calling and stuff. Boy, boy, you're like gods. So when I'm upset and you say, you should be happy, you have a roof over your head, you have enough to eat, I figure that I guess I'm wrong or, or stupid for feeling the way I do. I don't know what to think. I'll try to think the way they think on TV. I may end up stuffing or, or doubting my feelings the rest of my life. I may become addicted to mind-altering substances that will enable me to shut down those feelings. After all, they're so stupid. I, like you, may eventually call everything that I don't understand stupid, thereby becoming critical and judgmental. I may lose my sense of self and go looking for self-worth from someone else. Someone you're really going to hate. <laughs> and if you don't slow down and take the time to value me and lovingly guide me in 10 years, I'll be making your life a living hell. I'll become a teenager. And you'll be wondering what you did wrong. When kids are upset, we want to be heard. We don't want you to fix us. We just want you to listen. We long for you big guys to say, tell me more. We need you to go, no way. Wow, did that really happen? Then what? Oh boy, I bet that hurt you did great. Gosh, I'm glad you're safe now. Boy, I really love you. See, that's what kids want to hear when they're upset. Kids of all ages want to hear that. You know what really baffled us at the convention? We spoke about this over Frappuccinos late one night. It was how you parents expect automatic respecting, like you don't have to earn it or anything, like it just came with the owner's manual. 
you don't listen to us or to each other, but we're expected to listen to you. Yes, I understand that, that you got here before us and we say stupid stuff and you have tips to offer us, information that we need to hear for our living and safety, but often you don't present the material in a way that we can possibly assimilate it or understand it. You're either speaking over our heads or you're boring the number two out of us. Of course we start to fidget. It's not really our fault. The ants in our pants force us to squirm. And we may miss your point. You know, you talk a lot slower than we think. You know how hard it is to listen. <laughs> hey, if it were easy, you'd do it more. Kids have agendas as well. Perhaps we're running late for recess. We're expected on the playground. Look, get to the point and move along. Respect our time. We have bullies to see, lunches to trade, boogers to pick, and all before bedtime, which is a lot earlier than your bedtime. You know what would really work with us? Role model. You want us to be thoughtful and kind, assertive and truthful? Well, set an example. Kids are in apprenticeship. We watch the masters. We look to you to learn how to be people. The problem is some of you are really rotten at being good people. Oh, not you, of course, but you know who I'm talking about. So the rotten people, the stinkers, the meanies, them who have their heads up their butts, they know that they can't be good role models, so they are forced to use control, punishment, fear, intimidation. It's all they've got in the toolbox. So what are you supposed to do when one of us hauls off and throws a buy me tantrum in the middle of the store? <laughs> this is what we came up with. You look us square in the eye. Holding our little shoulders, you say, you're really mad, aren't you? You sound like you're in a lot of pain. Are you suffering? I feel like screaming too. Should I scream? Should the kid respond by screaming, I don't care, buy me Malibu Barbie. You stay in their face. Yes, I can see how angry you are that I'm not buying Barbies today. I know you want me to and that you're angry. I, I feel angry sometimes when I don't get what I want. Boy, I feel bad. I really, I really like you and I wish you weren't so mad. So buy me Barbies and I'll stop being mad. Yeah, I could do that, but then I get angry and I'd rather have you mad than me. <laughs> So if the kid's still screaming, rather than chewing through the handle of the shopping cart, you take a deep breath and you enlist fellow shoppers under the it takes a village to raise a child law. You ask the witnesses to help distract the kid who's obviously starved for a little attention. Give them interest, but don't give them the Barbie because you don't want to teach them that going ballistic gets desirable results. Look. I know it's scary to volunteer, to participate. Why should I get involved? It's not my kid. It's not my fault that the parent can't control their child. I'm too lazy. I'm busy. What tantrum? What kid? What store? I'm actually on an island in the Bahamas with my husband's business partner. <laughs> I hear a lot of parents are just too permissive these days. I remember when you could just smack them and they'd shut up. To those of you who are so quick to judge a parent as bad, take a moment and take a peek at your own behavior. Why do you just roll your eyes? Why don't you say something to the three-year-old little beast? Afraid that the mom will get mad or that the beast won't respond well to you? Look, get over it and realize that you'll be okay. Their reaction isn't the point. The point is that you tried and I bet Oh, I really bet that you would have loved it if someone had tried to comfort you when you were a baby beast. Besides, you better get active in the evolution of the species. Otherwise, the little monster at TJ Maxx today could turn into the big monster who carjacks and bumps you off in the parking lot of the mall tomorrow. We don't want to be bad seed kids. We just need to be led by confident people. And every time you, the adults, show us bravery and gentle concern, when you show us that uncontrolled displays of rage is counterproductive, when you show us how to use our heads and that thinking is beneficial, you teach us how to avoid getting pepper sprayed. All the kids were unanimous on this universal truth. Calling a kid stupid never makes us smarter. It just makes us really insecure and then lacking confidence in our brains when we're confronted by something confusing we get overwhelmed we're sure we can't learn it after all we're stupid 
So we tune you and mid out, and we tune in something that gives us a sense of comfort, like Bruce Willis blowing away the bad people in movies. So what are we, the children, asking? That you say to the kid who set the cat on fire, this calls for a time out. Hell no, lock him up before he sets me on fire. But make sure that he's getting educated while he's incarcerated, or he'll be released, as most baby criminals are, angrier and ready to do more harm. Punishing the little criminals just to avenge your anger can backfire. You adults need to be using common sense. We the kids, thank you very much for your time. I'm Susan Stadner's inner child. Please hang on for the phone number. If you don't call, I'll cry. If you're a parent who's sitting there going, oops, I used fear and intimidation as a tool. I wanted the kids to listen. Cheer up. Just about everybody in America believes that you should hit your kids. It's a national pastime, like bowling and, and blaming other people for our woes. You're in the majority, relax. Hell, you gotta hit those kids. How else are they gonna fear you? I was hit. I was yelled at. I turned out okay. The depression, the suicide attempts, the drug addiction and obesity and alcoholism and slutty behavior kept me busy. I never needed cable. If you are a parent who's been spilling rage all over your kids, it's not too late to make amends. Talk to them. Say, look, sorry. I'm going to respect you more. You're a good kid. You always have been. I'm sorry if I ever made you feel like you weren't. I appreciate who you are, and I'd like you to be able to trust me. And I'm sorry I screwed up and yelled and was impatient. And, well, maybe we should start a therapy fund along with a college fund. Look, as a parent, you will be doing stuff, and you won't be doing stuff, that you will need to say sorry for. If you don't think that you owe your kids an occasional apology, well, save big for that shrink fund. Sometimes we don't want to explore our subconscious or our past. Some of us are afraid that we can't handle the truth. But the truth is affecting us whether we face it or not. For example, as a child, no one listened to me. I had a lot to say, as most kids do. But could never get the adults to focus on me. I had an attention deficit disorder. It's not that I had trouble concentrating, as is evident by the hours I spent glued to the TV. The attention deficit was that of my parents. It would take criminal activities to get them to shift their attention to me. Flunking out, dating air guitarists, a sudden weight gain of 60 pounds, made them talk to me, <laughs> actually made them yell at me. <laughs> now, I understand that they did the best they could. They were working very hard to make money so that one day they could afford to send me to therapy where I would talk about how they were never there. The truth is that I lived a lie for about 30 years. My sister, 11 years my senior, was my authority. I looked to her as to how to be. She seemed so together. She was so assertive and strong and opinionated. One of her opinions was that I was an obnoxious, stupid pain in the ass. I spent 30 years trying to show others that I was not a pain in the ass, but that's very hard to do. My insecurities shaped my behavior. I hid, I ran, I ran to the bar, I ran to the kitchen, I ran to men who would affirm my sister's opinion. When anyone would comment that I was talented or bright, I wouldn't quite know what to do with the information. Compliments felt nice for a moment. They'd fill me with two seconds of hope. I, I am. I'm, I'm good. But then the good feeling would disappear. See, it didn't fit into my opinion of myself. I didn't have a file to put it in. But boy, you criticize me and oh yes. There's quite a large file for that. That gets stored in the software. Yep, you tell me that I'm a loser, and it fits. By talking about my feelings, my sister, my childhood, I gained understanding. But the intellectual growth didn't do much to change my feelings. While comforted by the information, 
that I wasn't really an idiot pain in the ass, I still felt like I was. And sometimes I was. I told my therapist that my sister would say, Susan, you used to throw yourself down on the floor and start to scream. No one knew what to do with you. You were always obnoxious. And I would tell my therapist, see, I, I was crazy. But my therapist would say, drowning people are obnoxious. They appear violent. They flail. They kick. They scream because they're fighting for their lives. Did no one try to save you? Did you have anyone to talk to? No, I'd tell her. My parents said that I had nothing to complain about. Nazis weren't chasing me. I wasn't living in the woods. I had shoes and enough to eat. Obviously, I weighed 160 pounds. If Ma was in a chatty mood, she'd tell me about her childhood. That would shut me up. I mean, how could I compare my stupid fear or pain or loneliness to death camps and Nazis? I was pretty dumb to think that I had anything to whine about, so as a child I threw myself down on the floor and screamed. It seemed right at the time. Therapy taught me that you don't have to have experienced severe trauma to be traumatized into feeling that you don't have a right to your feelings. A simple neglect of your inner life by your primary caretakers can cause you to doubt your worthiness as a human. It can train you to be ashamed of your feelings and to bury them and to try and be whatever they wanted you to be, whoever they were. I tried to be less obnoxious, less myself, and more like Jane Pauley. I can't be Jane Pauley, so I drank. I'm Susan Stadner, and the shows usually air Monday nights, unless they don't. If you'd like to know exactly when they air, or you'd like the free newsletter, I'm online at www.susansays.com. That's S-U-Z-A-N-S-A-Y-S dot com. Or call 310-451-WIRE. That's 310-451-9473. Thanks, Arthur on Montana for the jewelry, Denise at Textures in Brentwood for my hair care, Eileen at Hair Jewels for my pretty hair ornaments, Erica for my facials, Media One, Cox Communications, Falcon, and Century Cable for getting the shows on the air, and thank you so much for watching. Now, go to the phone and call me. If you don't call, shame on you. There is a growing concern among the children of the planet regarding... What happened to the prompter? Turn to the prompter. Hello? 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 There's a growing concern about the prompter. Okay. We're ready? You can start over. Ta <laughs> prompter ready? <clears throat> there is a growing concern of creation and disappointment before we actually give up trying to get love. <laughs> Can you get a close up of my booger? You know, I spent half my allowance on makeup. Thanks to Arthur on Montana for the gems, and Gilda Marks for my beautiful dress, and Eric for my music, and thank you for watching. Tell a friend. <gasps> I'm finished. <laughs>